Garden Center is here. Now, everyone always asks about garden tips and this time of year, and the former host was great at that. Cindy was the best. I am not, but we do have experts from the Wallach Garden Center. All right, also coming up, we've got some folks from Louisville Blondes and Drapery. They've got a very successful business, and we want to talk about that a little bit because, uh, you know, you may want to spruce up the home for Derby, and I think your blinds and draperies are very important. Adam Richmond is here. Adam Richmond is a guy who makes food fun. You've seen his show, Man vs. Food. He's going to be with us via satellite. He's got a brand new show on NBC. And uh, we'll talk about Malbec Day. And now with us, one of my favorite guests. He's here uh, just about every Thursday. Dr. Eli Karim. We call him Dr. Eli. And we're going to talk about marriage and family issues. He is a licensed marriage and family therapist. Uh, and first of all, Doc, before we get started here real quickly, how can folks get a hold of you or someone like you if they're having issues with their with their spouse or with their kids, whatever the case may be? Yeah, just like every, every time we, we come on, we talk about marriage and family therapy, uh, relationship health, and I represent the Kentucky Association for Marriage and Family Therapy, KAMFT. It's a division of the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy. So you can get a hold of any licensed marriage and family therapist. That's abbreviated LMFT. You can go to www.kamft.org, which you see on the screen right there. Also on that page, you're going to be able to see all our past segments over the last year and a half or so on Wave 3 Listens. And you can also go to www.therapistlocate dot net click on that rectangular red box there and you're gonna put in uh, your zip code and we'll come up with all of the marriage and family therapists licensed in your area and it's about 400 in the state John and many of those are centrally located here in wave country so we uh, every week we take your emails we take your calls we're gonna do that today uh, and we got some good ones today we do and we encourage you to give us a call 571-5163 you know the number give us a call and we'll talk to dr. Eli Karen give you a chance to talk to him one-on-one -on -one here real quickly all right we're going to go to an email and this is first of all dr karam i like the beard look you're, yeah. bring, you're bringing sexy back yeah, it looks right. good okay here we go uh, my husband has recently lost about 30 pounds and has gotten to extremely good shape i also noticed that he's spending extra time grooming himself i am usually a self-confident person and he has never given me reason not to trust him in the past i have wanted him to make some of these changes for a while now but why do i feel less than secure with him lately how can I talk to him about this without starting a fight? You know, I see where she's coming from. If someone suddenly is taking a special interest in looking better, getting in shape, and it's not something you think you've done, I understand that. It's like, yeah. is someone encouraging him or is he feeling good about something? Right. So, I mean, Kim, that is a great email. Uh, thank you so much for sending because it's, it's like something... Uh, on the kind of tip of everybody's tongue or they think about it but that they don't want to kind of verbalize it so this idea when your partner makes a sudden change in either lifestyle or personal appearance so in this case we're talking about weight loss we could be talking about some type of uh, this could be a spouse uh, boyfriend girlfriend or a family member if you're a parent and your teen makes some radical change too but let's tackle your uh, your issue. So the, the first thing is to kind of understand the context of why the change is. Because yes, if you don't have context, naturally when you see, a, when I read an email like that, the normal thing people think is, okay, is there somebody else? Why is he doing this now? Is he attracted to somebody else? Is somebody at work or outside of work giving him some feedback? So it would throw up some red flags. So the first thing in a non-defensive way, one of the tips is to get some context. Ask him. Uh, come from a place of encouragement. Hey, this is great. I'm just curious I've been asking you to do this for a while why now and a lot of couples as we said before if there is no overt conflict or serious problem relationship, they just become disconnected they are focused over focused on work or their kids so they're not creating that couple time that we talk about that protected time so in, in lieu of that you kind of lose sight of your partner's world and you're kind of operating on out-of-date knowledge so perhaps uh, if you had that if you're creating these rituals of connection as we've talked about many times on the show either these, these brief uh, exchanges during uh, before you leave in the morning reunion uh, in the afternoon uh, before you go to bed at night you're keeping up to date with your partner's world so the first step is get the context and don't come off defensive and then uh, when you get the context and you understand more uh, find some way to join in it so you said before in the message you had wanted to make these changes so he's doing it now so is there a way that you can kind of join in that with him so that you feel a part of it and uh, again if you ask in a non-defensive way if you come from a, a soft startup rather than a harsh startup as we say in, in uh, couple therapy uh, you can usually understand understand more what your partner's coming with. But this happens a lot, John. So, uh, you know, if, if your son came home with a tattoo or if uh, a, a piercing or some sudden change, the first reaction is, oh, it's kind of threatening because it's different. And sometimes when things are fret threatening, either with spouses or boyfriend, girlfriend, or uh, uh, parents and their children, it's a negative reaction to start with, which really breaks down the whole communication process. So you, 
can't be threatening. You can't. Uh, it's going to trigger this defensive response. Yeah, uh, relationships one on one. It's all about the approach, isn't it? Oh, I about mean, the you approach. you want to talk about it, and you're not saying avoid the topic, but it's how you approach it and how you work yourself into it. Hey, you look great. Right. Okay. Is there a compliment there? You know, why the sudden change? This is kind of nice. Right. And mm -hmm. yeah, the other yin to the yang of this this question that we get a lot. Let's say your partner uh, does approach you really the right way, and they have a legitimate issue. So, uh, in lieu of this, uh, it's the last week of the semester U of L, so I have a lot of grading to do. So I did not shave this weekend. As you <laughs> looks can good. See. So well, you, you might think so, but my wife doesn't particularly enjoy the feel of it or or the look of it, uh, and my a five and four year old think it looks a little scary. So uh, <laughs> as long as they're coming at me at the right way, I'm probably going to take that feedback in. I'm probably going to make an adjustment. Uh, I'm not that attached to it. But again, if someone came at me in a negative way or was pejorative or put me down, I'm probably going to be more defensive and dig my heels in and not be as open to their feedback or, or wanting to change. So this happens all the time in it, even the strongest of relationships. Five seven one five two six three. Something I want to touch upon. I know we're, she's probably feeling some calls right now, but real quickly, it is marriage season. Mm -hmm. There's something that you mentioned on the show before, and I had people email me and mm -hmm. ask me about it. It's premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. Is is like if you have any red flags at all, get in front of them. Proactive. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend that proactive approach? And for folks who maybe have recently gotten engaged, what do they do? How do they get a hold of someone? How many sessions is it? How does it work? Good questions. Uh, yes, premarital uh, therapy, counseling, whatever you have it, very important. Uh, however, most people, if they're young and in love and they don't want to necessarily, it has a negative connotation, I don't want to, things are great, why would we want to go to counseling? This idea, though, of, as far as prevention is the best form of intervention. So you can go to a licensed marriage and family therapist, whether you're working from a kind of manualized, uh, empirically-based curriculum or just a more open-ended, customized approach. You want to ask the marriage and family therapist uh, what their experience working with uh, premarital couples generally how many sessions as I said sometimes there is a prescribed number of sessions there's some um, MFTs that will work with you on a more open-ended uh, uh, kind of customized way so uh, a very good idea and no stigma attached to it and you get a really good sense of this compatibility areas where you really match up and other areas where you know you have some this significant differences and sometimes these significant differences don't get triggered till after the wedding day till you start merging assets, start living together, or start having kids. So you want a you proactive kind of plan, and certainly a marriage and family therapist can help that. And it is wedding season, and certainly if you're getting married in June or July, it's not too late go in and have a mm -hmm. couple of sessions with a marriage and family therapist. Uh, Dr. Eli, it's, it's pretty typical that you and 